Hello, this is Darren at Moonhair Studio. And today for part two of my new season of Living with the Qcon Pro X, we're going to take a quick overview of the new auto program panel and see how it differs from the old one. So although you don't have to pay for this new panel, you do have to pay the shipping cost. So is it worth it for you? Well, let's take a look at what's changed. And the first thing to say is that the main controls, the transport controls remain unaltered. They're not uh, part of the control panel. So you'll still have access to all of the usual sort of play, record, stop, fast forward, etc. Now, the first obvious difference, I think, is quite a logical one. We used to have our marker track navigation down here and we'd have previous, add and next. Now, that did cause a little bit of confusion because automatically you think that previous and next are going to be next to each other. Um, and so you'd be adding markers by accident and then having to undo that. We now just have two buttons, previous and next for your navigation, um, conveniently with the uh, arrows markers on them. And then to get to your add marker, you toggle this layer two button. In fact, this is the only thing in the Cubase version of the APP that actually um, uses this layer two. On some of the different doors that you've got, layer two is actually quite a, a useful function because you will have lots and lots of different things that you can get to. But on Cubase, it's just this particular one. So with that toggled on and it conveniently lights up, you can then add a marker using that button and then uh, navigate through to where you want your next one, add another one and continue like that, um, you know, wherever you want to add a marker. But always remember to toggle that off afterwards. And now you can step backwards and forwards using those two buttons. Now, depending on how you use your QCon, the next change may be a little bit controversial. I've done videos in the past saying how useful I find the function keys. These are programmable keys. There's eight of them there. You can program any function you like or any macro. So it can actually do some reasonably complex things with just the click of one button. But also you can do shift and these eight keys to get to another eight functions. So in effect, you've got 16 buttons there. Now in the previous layout, the layer two button was actually the shift button. So that was rather convenient because you could just shift and click. And for instance, shift F8 for me was to export my final track. But now the shift key is much further down. It's actually a lot more difficult to reach these to do the shift and the function. So that's going to be a little bit more tricky for me. If you don't use the function keys or you've only got eight functions that you feel you need, that's not going to be a problem. So do we actually gain any functionality from upgrading this main section of the board? Well, yes, we do. The first one that jumps out at me is this new project key. This means that if you're on a screen such as the key editor here and you want to get back to your main project, you can just click that button and you're there. And it's positioned very comfortably next to the mixer button so that you can jump between the two screens, which are probably the ones that we most often use in Cubase. Now we have another new dedicated button and that's the solo button. Now that's not to solo a channel because we've got our own dedicated solo buttons on each channel strip. But this removes the solos that you've got there. So if you've got solos all over your mix, and that could be 30 or 40 tracks, it's very difficult then to go through and unsolo them all by hand. So now you've got the click of one button or remove them all. This is actually a feature that I did program into the function key, so I'll be able to do away with that one. But also this benefits from the shift key as well, because if you happen to have your channels muted, then exactly the same thing. Shift solo will remove the mutes. Now, another button that benefits from the shift key is the save function. We've always had this so you can hit save and it saves your project. But if you're like me and you like to save different versions of the project as you go through and then you can revert back to earlier versions if you want to, then 
this function is really useful because you can shift save and that will save a new version under a slightly different file name it just numerically goes up through the file names i actually had this function programmed into my f8 key before so i'll be able to do away with that now and then the final key which also benefits from the shift key is the undo button now undo and redo are next to each other on the side here now they've been moved from the middle where they were a little bit lost they're much easier to locate now but undo itself if you shift undo it will bring up your um, edit history and then you can go back to the point where you want to be in your particular uh, project um, and then just click that off and you're back to that location. And there is one other new button that wasn't on the previous layout and that's the revert button. And that will revert back to your previously saved version of the project. So that's just uh, one little extra function that you've got there. Now, obviously, all of this extra functionality comes at some sort of cost. And in this case, the shift key here is replacing our dedicated punch in button, which we had on the previous version. Now, that's a shame for me because I did use to like that function. But obviously, some of these are ones that I actually programmed into the F keys so that I had access to them. They're now on the main board. So it does free up my function buttons to actually put punch in up there if I really want to. So I don't think that overall, we've lost a lot for the gains that we've got so all the other buttons that we used to have on the old panel are still here we've just shuffled the deck slightly uh, I like the fact that the edit button is up here on the top right hand corner nice and easy to find and also the read and write buttons as well which were sort of lost a little bit in the middle here I ended up putting stickers on them just so I could remember where they were they're nicely um, easy to find over there and other than that the the buttons are just placed um, in a sort of I don't know pretty logical sequence I think what about this lower section let's have a look at that so the bottom part of the panel remains unchanged. It still has exactly the same functions. For instance, um, you can move to your left and right markers with these keys here. You can move up and down eight channels at a time, um, and that is reflected on the LCD strip, um, or you can go one channel at a time. You can invert the faders and the pan pots by clicking this. So now the faders control what the, what the rotary pots were doing, um, or you can lock the, the faders off um, and likewise the transport bar works in exactly the same way it's still play stop fast forward rewind the zoom functions again work in exactly the same way that they did uh, before I hope you enjoyed that whistle stop tour of the new uh, control panel for Cubase and the Qcon Pro X it wasn't meant as an in-depth tutorial there are plenty of other videos on this channel that cover a lot of the features in more detail and I will also be updating the living with the Qcon Pro X series over the next couple of months with more in-depth um, tutorials about the functions of the new layout but for now um, give the video a thumbs up that would be really helpful guys but uh, don't feel you've got to subscribe to this channel it's it's an it's an amateurish mess most of the time so just enjoy what uh, i produce when it's useful to you and otherwise i'll see you on the next one take care guys